Talk to us about Pepco. I'm pleased to talk about Pepco, and it's not just you know uh, piling on uh, because they're an easy target. Uh, one of the other targets happens to be the Public Service Commission, and the Public Service Commission in the District of Columbia. I'm hoping that we have a clean sweep of the three commissioners because I think they've been uh, far too timid and not. Um, sufficiently engaged in regulating uh, PEPCO as they should. But you mentioned a bill in Maryland, but uh, I introduced uh, at the beginning of the year, even before this most recent event, a, a piece of legislation that we'll get a hearing, I think, next week uh, in another committee. And it's exactly that. It provides for penalties, and also there can be uh, 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 rewards uh, for PEPCO as well. We're in the bottom 20% and have been for a very long time in terms of reliability. And what we want to do is move them up to the what top the 20%. Explain that for me and for others who has. You penalize, so you charge PEPCO a million dollars because it didn't do something. Right, but what happens to the money? Yeah, but wait. The, uh, the money must come not from rate payers. It has to come from the profits of the people who hold stock in PEPCO. Uh, and the investors. The investors. And so I think that... Uh, that's a key point, too, because otherwise it's just a pass-through, and what do they care? In fact, the what-do-they-care attitude has seemed to me to be one that they've evinced, you know, for, for years. There'll be some sort of a crisis. Everybody will say, what's going on? And then they'll come and they'll have a 5-point, 10-point, 16-point plan, and it's just the same thing over and over again. And then the other thing here in the district in particular that they've cited over and over and over again are trees. You have too many trees, and you don't let us trim enough, et cetera. There have been uh, evaluations done that while that is something of a problem, that does not explain the poor reliability of PEPCO operating in the district. What about not being able to get to neighborhoods because of the horrendous traffic in this most recent storm? Is that a mitigating factor? But we're talking, in fairness, we're talking about the people who were out without a power three, four, five days, not Okay. That it didn't come on in five hours. Right. So, I mean, yes, well, I, it was an epic. Most of the, but most of it was in Montgomery County for the long term. I mean, the city got back fairly quickly. Although, well, it took me but, two days. I don't know how long it took you. Okay. Um, I didn't lose power. Uh, well, because, you know, you're I on a special list. <laughs> so, you're on a special list. Uh, I am my power. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, Are you off the grid, Tom? <laughs> I'm off, off the grid. grid. That would explain a lot. <laughs> I've got three chipmunks running a flywheel yeah. up on the roof. <laughs> right, right. No, but what about the the? Uh, let's say Pepco did badly and it ought to do better, and and, that, and find them if they don't. What about the regional response of the roads? The chaotic. Uh, you hear all the time about emergency evacuation they do these test things during the fourth of july fireworks and it's all nice because everybody's in a good mood but in a crisis quick situation the governments didn't talk to each other the federal government wanted people want to blame them but the fact is they told their people to go home a storm's coming where was the response from the local government well uh, you know i i obviously can't speak for the region though i agree with you that there ought to be uh you know coordination I can say something, though, about the District of Columbia. While there was some talk about salting and then, you know, the rain washed it away and so it wasn't, it wasn't there, I traveled home that evening myself. And uh, the major problem that I saw in the District of Columbia, in the downtown area, was gridlock. People yes, no blocking, one traffic control. Exactly right. People blocking the box. Instead of taking the people who would ordinarily be out there to conduct uh, traffic control. They said that they were putting them on plows. Well, it seems to me that the police have to be deployed to major intersections. I I was at 15th and K, for example, for I don't know how many cycles of the light simply because the 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 uh, box was blocked. Now that's on us, you know. As motorists, uh, right? Really, we really yeah, but we can't expect people and the chipmunk to behave, people to be running right, around and, and okay. stop and oh, you go first, Madam Chairman, and, and you know, that's not going to happen. No, no, you but need a no, but, it, it, but it's it's, no, it's but common do sense. Don't don't enter an intersection until right. you know you can get to right. the other side. Yeah, but if it's common sense, if you don't enter it, someone else will. No, no but you know you have to you have to look it's beyond. True. No, but you have to look beyond and say, can I fit over there? Of now, course. That's now, what the law says. Now, That's common sense. For example. Continue, Councilwoman Jay. And, and, you know, and, but I mean, it, it, it is basic uh, sense, and, and we have to take some responsibility ourselves. We can't just say, oh, the government this and the government that. You have to drive properly in those circumstances. It's especially important. I, so, I